Hello, everyone. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you to everyone who voted for me for uh, this opportunity to speak in front of you. Uh, I'm going to speak today about how Cardano plans to scale. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm Pi Lanningham, the CTO of SundaySwap. I like to say I'm a mathematician by passion, software engineer by trade. So Sunday Swap, uh, if you aren't aware, is actually two things. Sunday Swap Labs, which is the software company that built the Sunday Swap protocol. Um, we're also building a layer two governance solution um, and potentially other products for the Cardano ecosystem in the future. Um, there's also the Sunday Swap protocol, which is the decentralized, open, and permissionless decentralized exchange uh, on the Cardano network. Um, and it's guided by uh, a decentralized community of Sunday token holders. So this talk today is going to be about whether Cardano meets the needs of its ambitions, um, whether it scales to be a global financial operating system that can power DEXs, payments, games, etc. Um, what limitations are standing in our way and what we plan to do about that. Um, specifically, this talk is not going to be exact. Um, I'm going for intuition over specification. Um, it's not going to be complete. This space is huge, and I only have 10 minutes. <laughs> um, and it's not even really Sunday swap specific. So it's kind of uh, tangential to that. I just thought it would be a really interesting talk um, that you all would appreciate. So uh, Cardano scalability got off to a little bit of a rocky start. Um, you know, it spawned memes like one transaction per second. Uh, you know, much ink has been spilled over the concurrency problem. Um, we dealt with block size and execution unit limits that were tuned for a primarily payments-based blockchain. Um, and then we shifted into a smart contract-based blockchain, and there was some growing pains uh, around that. Um, Blockchains have this ambitious goal, um, and I'm going to go into each of these points in more detail, but really, uh, blockchains are trying to achieve a consensus that is robust, evolving, historical, and global. Um, so that means that we can achieve agreement among any two people, regardless of their background, race, ethnicity, culture, uh, what have you. This consensus is robust, so once reached, it can't be disrupted. Uh, even by malicious actors. It's evolving, meaning it can change over time. It's not just one snapshot in history of something we agreed on in the past. It's historical, so you know how you got to where you are. Um, you can audit that history. And it's global, meaning uh, anybody anywhere in the world can participate in this consensus. All those things together are incredibly ambitious. Um, and they're ambitious because they run up against a number of fundamental limitations. So first off, there's the speed of light. It, you know, even in a vacuum, it would take uh, a pulse of light, to 67 milliseconds, to travel around the Earth. Um, and every node and computer in the way that operates that, uh, that operates on that pulse, slows it down. So uh, a small ping takes, on average, 280 milliseconds to travel from Paris to New Zealand, for example. Um, so we have to reach this consensus uh, under that constraint. Um, similarly, you have to describe everything that happens. Um, you have to uh, describe how funds change or how kind of the state of your smart contract changes. Uh, we have security limitations. So there are no trusted nodes, um, or we don't want there to be trusted nodes. And we want strong guarantees about finality uh, and partition tolerance. Finally, we want everybody to be able to uh, run these nodes. So people on, you know, uh, in third world countries or on com kind of commodity hardware. So, so far, Cardano, I think, has been doing fairly well, given the, its ambitious goal and those constraints. Um, given the limited time, I'm not going to go through every single one of these points, but I'll make these slides available um, after the talk. Um, but uh, I think that you know, Cardano has a, a really robust infrastructure for scaling so far. Um, but is it enough to serve as the financial operating system of the world? Probably not. Um, so there are a number of improvements coming up to Cardano itself, to the layer one. Um, so we just passed the Vassal hard fork, um, which 
uh, introduced a lot of things that removed redundancies in the data that we are passing around the world. Um, and diffusion pipelining, meaning we're acting on that data sooner. Uh, just uh, in the last few days, a proposal for input endorsers detailing exactly how that will work um, uh, was released. And that is really going to bring us a parallel blockchain. Um, so it decouples the consensus from the validation of the blocks and means you can be validating those blocks constantly throughout, um, throughout the day. Um, and then uh, IOG also plans Mithril, which uh, I like to say it allows us to validate and leap entire epochs in a single bound. But beyond these improvements to the layer one, what can we go do to go further? Um, and I'm going to talk about, I'm going to briefly talk about four different things. Uh, each one of these is a, fundamentally about what trade-offs you can make. There's going to be a lot of data on this, or a lot of information on the slides. Again, this is more for reference later, um, and I'll make those slides available online. So the first option is the notion of side chains. And the basic idea here is that you run an entirely separate blockchain with a subset of your community, and you bridge funds back and forth. Um, when you do this, you can make a number of trade-offs to increase throughput, like just requiring better machines, right? Cardano uh, wants to penetrate into um, kind of the underdeveloped world. Uh, not every side chain needs to do that. Um, or you can introduce the notion of trusted nodes. Uh, it's great for medium risk protocols. Um, and it's great on Cardano because you can, uh, sh because the state on Cardano is uh, pre-sharded. So when you want to move that state to a sidechain, uh, it's already sharded for you. Um, it's really difficult because bridge security is difficult, and it's difficult to spin up on-demand sidechains. Second is the notion of state channels like Hydra. The basic idea here is you lock funds in a smart contract, you transact however you want between you and the people in this state channel, and then you settle on-chain, and you don't need the entire transaction history. Um, this is very the main drawback of this is it's very high risk for non-participants. Um, so if you're not one of the participants in the node, your funds could disappear, um, uh, get stolen by one of the by those participants collaborating. Um, the next solution is rollups and validiums. Um, so the basic idea here is similar to uh, a state channel. You lock your funds in a smart contract, you transact elsewhere but then you get that data on chain without validating it, and you allow people to provide fraud proofs to, uh, to prevent bad actors. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, myth or, so a note on Mithril. Uh, Mithril is going to be used for kind of validating the stake snapshot, but it's a really general purpose technology that could be used for things like rollups and validiums. And then finally, I'll talk briefly on zero knowledge. So this is, for example, Orbis is working on uh, a zero knowledge solution. Um, so this can be similar to rollups or validiums. It can also be similar to sidechains. Um, but you replace these fraud proofs and this validation with um, a notion of zero knowledge proofs where you can compress hundreds of transactions into a single on-chain proof. They're very difficult in practice, and it's a very new field. Um, so that was my whirlwind summary uh, of how Cardano scales. Like I said, I will make these slides available um, online. And uh, thank you again for voting me to speak at this conference. Mm -hmm.